Hello everyone. In this video, we will be answering the question, what is the cardinality of SLN over FQ? That is, what is the cardinality of the special linear group over the field FQ? This is the finite field with Q elements. So a number of prerequisites before we get started with the proof. One, we should know that SLN over FQ is the group of n by n matrices with entries in the finite field FQ and determinant equal to one. And the operation in this group is just normal matrix multiplication. Second, we should know that SLN over FQ is a subgroup of GLN over FQ. Third, we should know that GLN over FQ has cardinality given by this product here. In our previous video, we proved that this statement is true. I'll include a link above so that uh, you can look at that video before we continue with this proof. And lastly, we should know the first isomorphism theorem. That is, if F uh, is a group homomorphism from G to H with kernel kernel F and image image F, then G modded out by the kernel of F, this is the quotient group we get by taking G and modded out by the kernel of F, well then this is isomorphic to the image of F. So with these prerequisites in mind, what's the proof? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to construct a surjective group homomorphism so that we can use the first isomorphism theorem. So consider phi mapping from the general linear group over FQ into FQ star. And what's FQ star? This is the group of units of FQ. So remember, uh, the group of units of a finite field is a cyclic group. So we have phi, and what does phi do? So let's say such that phi of m, where m is any matrix in GLN over FQ, is equal to the determinant of m. So here's the claim. Phi is a surjective group homomorphism. So let's prove the claim. And maybe before we even prove this claim, does it make sense to send uh, an element of GLN over FQ to FQ star with the determinant? And it does make sense because we remember that if M is an element of the general linear group over this field, then it has non-zero determinant. So we're sending it to a set that has all non-zero elements of FQ. So this certainly makes sense in that perspective. Let's now show that it's a group homomorphism. So consider A and B as arbitrary elements of GLN over FQ. Then phi of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times B and this is where we're going to use the fact that determinants are multiplicative. So this is the same thing as the determinant of A times the determinant of B. But from our definition of phi, this is the same thing as phi of A times phi of B. So we've shown that phi is a group homomorphism. Let's show that it's surjective. So let A be an arbitrary element of FQ star. And let's consider the matrix M equal to, so this is going to be, remember it has to be in GLN over FQ. And we're gonna build it so that we have A in the first entry and every other entry along the diagonal is one and everywhere else it's zero. So this is an N by N matrix. Now notice it's a diagonal matrix and the determinant of a diagonal matrix is the product of its entries along the diagonal. So this is an element of GLN over FQ. Why? Well, it's an element or it has non-zero determinant because it's A times one times one times one, so on and so forth. And A is an FQ star. So A is certainly not equal to zero. And we also have that the determinant of M is equal to A. 
And because A was an arbitrary element of FQ star, this implies that phi is surjective. Great. So we've shown we have a surjective group homomorphism between two groups. Of course, uh, we are in the situation of the first isomorphism theorem. So we have GLN over FQ. This surjects into FQ star by phi. And by the first isomorphism theorem, I know that if I consider GLN over FQ, I mod out by the kernel of phi, then this quotient group is isomorphic to FQ star. Now here's the next claim. The kernel of phi is equal to SLN of FQ. So I'm claiming two sets are equal. To prove it, I'm going to show that they're subsets of each other. So proof of claim. So let's consider M in the kernel of phi. So if it's in the kernel, that means that phi takes M and maps it to the identity element in FQ star. The identity element in FQ star is 1. So this means that phi of m is equal to 1, but then this implies that the determinant of m is equal to 1. But m is an element of the general linear group with determinant equal to 1. Then this means that m must be an element of SLN over FQ. So we've seen that the kernel of phi is a subset of SLN of FQ. To see the other direction, let's take an arbitrary element of SLN over FQ. Then because M is an element of SLN over FQ, I know that the determinant of M is equal to one, which is equal to phi of M but then this means that phi takes M and maps it to the identity element. So what this means is that M is in the kernel of phi. So then SLN of FQ is a subset of the kernel of phi. So therefore, because we've shown double inclusion, I know that the kernel of phi must be equal to SLN of FQ assets. Great. Okay. So now we're going to use the fact that uh, GLN of FQ has finite cardinality and we know what it is. So we know, okay, the cardinality of GLN over FQ modded out by, we said kernel of phi was SLN of FQ is equal to the cardinality of FQ star and this is just because from first isomorphism theorem, we know that as groups, these two sets are equal, they must have the same cardinality. Well, FQ star, let's think about this. This is the cyclic group or the group of units of the finite field FQ. Well, in a field, every non-zero element is invertible. So this has cardinality Q minus one. Now we also have that the cardinality of GLN over FQ is finite. What this lets us do is split up the cardinality of GLN and SLN. So what I mean by this is we have the cardinality of GLN of FQ over the cardinality of SLN over FQ is equal to Q minus one. But we know, okay, the cardinality of the general linear group is this product written up here. Q minus one is a known value. So if we do some rearrangement, I see that the cardinality of SLN over FQ is equal to, I have the product from I equals one to N of Q to the N minus Q to the N minus I. And I divide this whole thing by Q minus one. 
and that gives me the desired result, the cardinality of the special linear group over FQ. For those of you who are here from the last video, uh, this proof certainly has much more group theory involved than the previous problem, which is quite interesting because looking at the proof for the cardinality of GLN over FQ, we made many appeals to linear algebra, but for SLN over FQ, we use just first isomorphism theorem and some basic ideas about group theory. As always, feel free to write suggestions for future videos in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.